Hello, everybody. You are now listening to the Overflow Podcast with Jay and Joaquin. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. Well, at least one of us is back in town. I never left. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever it is that you might be listening to this. We are back after a two-week hiatus. As always, I'm Joaquin. And I'm Jay. And we thank you for joining us on this week's episode. Uh, Happy Memorial Day from two weeks ago when uh, we couldn't meet up to do... So happy Memorial Day to everyone. Um, So uh, this week, uh, it's going to be kind of a more uh, somber, serious, seriously somber uh, episode. Uh, Jay uh, just came back uh, from a heartbreaking trip, which is why we didn't uh, get to do the the, uh, episode last week. And and so we're going to unpack, you know, we're going to talk about that uh, in a second. Um, as to, uh, you know, like what happened, like thumbnail, right? What happened, kind of the general milieu, I guess. I mean, did I use that right? I hope I did. You did, you did. Um, and, and then, um, uh, in the midst, in the midst of the grief, um, uh, what God communicated to Jay. And so Jay, uh, came back, uh, just fired up, uh, in a more somber way, um, to share uh, what was placed in his heart. Uh, we do want to say that, uh, we do want to give a shout out to uh, just a couple of things. We're going to give a shout out to Big Papi, uh, David Ortiz. On his way back to Boston. Who's on his way back to um, Bean Town. He got shot and tried to rob him. They shot him, or they shot him and then tried to rob him. Um, or maybe a little bit of both. Uh, come on, why are you doing that to Big Papi down, down in Dominican, man? And then uh, you want to give a shout out to the family of Bushwick Bill. From the Ghetto Boys. Now, uh, only a certain amount of you will know who that is. He was a believer, right? Uh, and he was a believer right, right there at one point. I know he. I think he dropped a couple of Christian hip hop singles yeah, at at some point. A few singles, yeah, it was dope. Um, so Bushwick, uh, Bushwick Bill from the Ghetto Boys, uh, which is a, one of the iconic uh, '90s right era hip hop groups. Uh, he passed. So shout out to his family. Um, Get this family up in prayer, and, even if uh, you didn't know who he was. Yeah, man, but look him up. Look some of his old music. Parental advisory uh, will be um, administered. <laughs> boop, boop, parental advisory. So, uh, so we got that, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the song of the week, and then jump right into um, today's topic. Song of the week is. Um, let's see here. Okay, so <laughs> the song is called "Radical." Uh, and it features, uh, like, I guess it was dropped by Called Out Music, but then it features uh, Cass and Ecclesia. Ecclesia, I can never say it right. Ecclesia. Yeah, that's what I said. Ecclesia. Um, <clears throat> and it's called Radical, and it's a dope, dope song, just in general, just super dope. But Jay uh, picked it. He feels that it really fits. With today's yeah, topic, I felt, right? I, I heard it like at two in the morning, <laughs> driving back from yes, Pennsylvania. Yes, two in the morning. So yeah, it it, it fits. So <laughs> we got that. All right. So I'm gonna set up the picture. I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna set it up well, from my from my perspective, and then we'll we'll go right in. No, right? No, well, well, do your 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 movie thing. Your movie thing for for this week. Oh, so okay. So what do you want to know? Because this week. I don't know. I'm, I'm completely out of touch. I listen. I saw. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I saw Godzilla. If you like seeing monsters fighting, great movie. Everything else, eh? Was it? Eh? Was it? Eh? eh. Dark Phoenix. I watched it. Was it? Eh? eh or was it garbage? Uh, everywhere I read, it was garbage. I'm okay. So I think if you're super tight into the whole X Men universe and the whole like the comics, right? If that's your your kind of your base. Of reference, garbage. I think you'll be like garbage. They didn't do the story right. Every everybody right. They well, didn't do the story right. Blah 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 blah. I, I, I if, don't think if it, you're just a, it's, it's difficult to do the actual story right of the Phoenix saga. But as far as as far as a cap to the to kind of this this X Men quadrilogy, quadrilogy, right? Um, 
eh. Like, it's definitely, some have said it's the worst X-Men movie. Yeah, I read that. Um, I, I, I would have to watch Last Stand and this one back to back to kind of really make that determination. <laughs> Last Stand. Right? To really make that determination. But, I, but then again, I'm super simplistic when it comes to movies. As long as I was entertained. As long, listen, here's how you know your movie stinks. If I'm fighting to stay awake. When I'm watching it the first time, like Captain Marvel, it's our Captain Marvel, <laughs> like Captain Marvel. That's the that's the low bar. Um, it was eh. I, honestly, I would tell people if you really really want to watch in the theater, go watch in the theater. But if not, just wait. You can just rent it. You know, the, pay ninety nine cents to rent it, and then you'll feel much better about about how you spent your money. Um, but this coming up week, we are getting Men in Black International. Which I am, I'm actually kind of hyped to see. Chris Hemsworth has become one of my favorite guys to go watch because he is, he's fine. He's he's hit a character that's hilarious. Like right, he's hit like this character that's hilarious, and I'm happy to see him in in all the different movies. Kind of like Rock has the same character, and I will go see any Rock movie. <laughs> and, you know, that could be Rock the nanny. I'm gonna go watch him. Um. So yeah, so we'll do. Uh, so this week we got um, a couple of movies coming out. The big one. It's going to be Mission Impossible. Uh, it's got uh, it's got Thor, and it's got Valkyrie in it. What more do you want? You mean Men in Black? Or Men in No, I say <laughs> it has Thor and Valkyrie. No, you said... You what did I say? You did said I say? Mission Impossible. Oh, you know why I said that? Because I was just looking at buying the newest one. I, <laughs> I saw that earlier. I'm here like... Men in, wait, oh, Mission another? Impossible 7? It just came out? No. Like, um, what? Well, no, you know what it is too, uh, and 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 I'm just gonna make this an aside. Everybody can go look it up. But apparently, Justin Bieber challenged um, Tom Cruise to an MMA fight. Come on, dead serious. Find that somewhere else. You can you can get your chuckles there. So that's it. Men in Black International. It's got uh, Thor. It's got Valkyrie. And it's got the guy from Taken. That's so funny. Thor and Valkyrie. That's <laughs> true. And it's got the guy from Taken. <laughs> I know who you are. I've got the take us at the scale. Blah. So so we got that. All right. Um, I think that's it. Nothing, nothing special. We're working on some stuff. Not ready to, to announce it. Uh, well, we'll be actually starting, right, kind of gearing that stuff up again uh, this coming week. Uh, next week or so, hopefully, we'll be able to announce something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jay is going to be traveling on uh, Thursday on Thursday to South Carolina for fuel, fuel something for um, Rise Up Steak. Oh, that's what I said. Rise Up Steaks, <laughs> steaks or steak? steak? Rise Up Steak. Rise um, Up Steak. Um, it's in Greenville. It's um, it's yeah. It's going to be myself with DJ Four Twelve and Uzuhan and Erica Mason. Um, also from Atlanta, and someone named Cat We Hunt. We're gonna do like a a youth. It's funny. It's 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 a state driven thing, so it's not really like evangelical, right? Because it's 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 a state sponsored thing. So, oh, okay. So the <laughs> churches are doing it, but they're doing it under under the the label of, of the state of South Carolina. Uh. And because it's a southern state, they don't care that you're bringing Jesus into it. No, but that's the thing. I was <laughs> you were told not to bring Jesus into it. I, I got to find a I, no. I was told. I was told. You know, you gotta. You you, you gotta bring you, you bring it, but where it's not, where it's not preachy. All right. So what you gotta I say? I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Here's how you do it. Watch, watch when your boy was on Doctor Oz. And he talked about the Holy Spirit and Jesus Yo, that's without bringing up Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, what's his name? Um, Carl Lentz. Carl Lentz. Watch what Carl Lentz was Oz. And then here's what you do. As you're watching it, you write it down. You only change a couple of words and you just use that. <laughs> no, because I'm supposed to share I'm supposed to share something that happened to me that I've never really spoken about. Oh, okay. But um, but they were like, well, you know, if, if, if Jesus is a part of your story, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, Jesus is the yeah, hero. Not only is Jesus He's the hero of the story. story. My name's Jose. It's like like get close to Jesus, <laughs> right? So was his best friend. So it was um right. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. And then we're also and then it's funny because we were always planning on taking it as a weekend away, right? That's so we're all going. And um, because of last week, like now, now I need it, right? 
<laughs> now it's now it's therapy. Word dizzle. So we got so we got that coming up uh, <clears throat> this week. It's Thursday. So if you're in South Carolina, rise state. Rise up state. Rise up state. I uh, find it. Um, I know Jay's posted it on the. It's been posted on his site, on his Insta, and the Overflow Insta has been posted on there too. So go look it up. Facebook, the Overflow Podcast has been up there also. Check it out. So with all of that being put together, because I'm not going to say it. <laughs> with all that being said, oh, I could help myself. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and dive into uh, today. So here, so I'm going to set it up. All right. Good. So I'm going to set it up. So on Monday of last week, um, <clears throat> I get a text from Jay. And he says, yo, leaving for, and I could probably find it, but I like my way better. Yo, leaving for um, Pennsylvania with my brother, Anar, um, won't be able to... Um, uh, won't be able to do it. Do my nephew do the podcast. My nephew is um, in a coma. I think is what he said. And so I was like, "Oh, well, okay, yeah, man, no problem." You know, go. What, what can you say to that? No, uh, no, you must no. show up first. You have an obligation. <laughs> He's in a coma. He ain't going to work. That, and see, that's what you don't say because that's just super mean, especially at the moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we know that. Um, yeah. <laughs> He's not gonna know. Anyway. Uh stop. Anyway, so uh so we're like, yeah, fine. So then as as we as uh you know, uh I think later on or not long after, I was like, yo, what happened? You know, so he was like, Oh, well, uh, uh, originally what we had heard was that he was mugged, uh, then he got beat up and he was left for dead. That's all we know right now. It was like, bet, go, you know, um, you know, praying for you. Keep us up to date. Let us know, um, you know, what's up. And so that was it. So um, from that, then all kinds of stuff just started bubbling up and all kinds of information started flowing out once Jay uh, got there and, and, and as police uh, were called and as all, all these things, different things happened. So it boiled down to, um, his, uh, his nephew was, it looks, it, it boils down to a guy thought or claims that Jay's nephew, um, attacked him. And this guy then claims that he punched him to defend himself. And in that super saiyan punch, uh, Jay's nephew, it, it knocked him out. He, he had head trauma, uh, which put him in a coma, which then the doctors said, well, you know, now he's, um, he's brain dead. You know, so to be brain dead, that means the trauma to the head had to be massive, right? And so then the family uh, was told, you know, apparently in Pennsylvania, if you've been declared um, in a vegetative state, then... By law, they have to. They well, by law, they they don't keep you alive, right? They don't keep you breathing on the machines, right? Um, they will. <clears throat> I I don't. I guess I'm assuming they'll give you time to get the family together before, uh, before yeah. they, you know, they turn off the machines and. Which is yeah, which is what they did. I mean, um, all right, sorry, taking over. Um, yeah, the story still isn't clear. Right, this whole thing is still. Under investigation. Right. So that's why we're saying allegedly. Right. <laughs> right. So it's still like it's still not clear. And I and I think that's that's one of the hardest parts because there's no closure. Right. Right. We can't excuse me, we can't move on because right. there's no closure. Right. Regardless right. It's one of those things where regardless of what it was, we just need to know like yeah. this is the end. Boom. This is why that, all this happened. That and the fact that um you know, let's be real, right? My nephew's dead. Right. You know, he was 25 years old. Jeremy Anar Soto is my, my my brother's youngest. Um, he's dead, and the guy that the guy that killed him is still walking around, allegedly. <clears throat> no, he is walking around. No, he allegedly killed him. We got, got to throw allegedly. That's the that's the. I don't want to get sued. I don't have any money. 
Uh, I'm, I'm not getting sued. Well, he probably don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, um... Oh, that'll be my luck. But it happened. That happened last... So... So that happened last week. And that was... My Monday was spent um, in tears and anger and in a Honda Pilot for 12 hours driving up to Pennsylvania with my brother to a place I've... I've seen on a map, but I've never visited and never right. been to before. Um, so, and it was tough because there were conflicting stories. And the toughest part, and this is where I don't understand the um, the disconnect, is that the kid that did it took pictures of my nephew after he did it and took a video of him. And he posted it on social media. And he was bragging about what he did. He was bragging and boasting about what he did to Jeremy while showing pictures and video of him on the floor. And the worst part of that is that the doctors say that they believe that he was brain dead, that he was gone before he even reached the hospital. Right. And sadly, I had to see these pictures and see this video and and you can see in his eyes, right, doesn't look right that he was gone, right, 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 so right, you I, sent me right, you sent me a um a a, a snapshot <clears throat> and and even when I looked at it, I was like, you could tell. It's like so you know you know you can tell when when something is just by looking at it yeah like you can tell like yeah that that wasn't that wasn't a, a, a that's why I said super saiyan right like that was because that wasn't a one punch and yeah, As, I knocked especially him out. especially because like I told you and I saw the kid and he said like he was like a little skinny nothing right right like he was a little skinny nothing it's like there's no way that that kid. Right. I mean, unless he had some like hardcore like training, like right? MMA you know, training. Boxing, MMA training, right. There's no way he would have done. And I say one punch because that's what I read in the report. Right. And we don't, we don't, we don't believe that to be true. And that's what, yeah, that's what he said, right? We don't, right. So, yeah. it's all, and that's the like thing. I, said, I don't believe it just by the picture. And, 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 and that's the whole thing because you look at the picture, you look at the video, you see what he said, and, and, um, yeah, things don't seem and to add they up. Don't, they don't add up. Right, they don't add up at all, and the and the the worst part is that it seems that the detectives are putting a lot of weight into what this kid said, and sadly, we believe that there were two other people present, but they're not coming up to say anything. Right, and so there's no one around, right. and there's no one to right. be a right. voice for Jeremy. <clears throat> right, and those people are probably connected to this kid, and they're not going to say anything, right. unless you find out who they are, and you can somehow, you know, pressure them. Subpoena them, or, you know, pressure them old, 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 old school New York style. Right, like, I mean, there with, were, with subpoenas by the uh, Attorney General. There, there were six of us there. Rudy Giuliani. There were, there were, you know, <laughs> there were we six of us there. We don't advocate that. Thing, right? Jay. I'm just saying. There's not advocate. No, I'm just saying because it's a part of this story because Jeremy had a dad and five uncles. Right. Right. So we, we, we are an army of our own. Right. We don't just, it's not like, oh, yeah, it's just my dad and then he has sisters. Right. Even though some, 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 some women. Yeah, like, it, yeah, uh, your, two, your two sisters, <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared of your two sisters more than I am some of your brothers. Right. So <laughs> it's like, it's like, it, it was, it was, t I'm not going to lie. Like, it was tough right. for me not to switch back. Like, I did for a while, not, not physically. Right. But there was a time I, I just told you. Right, where, emotionally. Where, uh, yeah, I was I was emotionally gone, and like I got into the detective's face, and I cursed him out. I put my finger all in his face, right? And 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 because and there was also like a condescendence and a dismissiveness in how he spoke to me, right? Like like I, and 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 that's what <laughs> I've never used this word before for myself, but but that's what triggered me, what? right? When I asked him, when I was asking him questions, it was almost like I was bothering him. Right, and every time I would ask something else, he would just like dismiss what I asked him and just tell me what the kid told him. 
And every time I would ask, well, what about this? Have you, the other two people that were supposedly there, nah, they weren't, there was no one there. He said that he was by himself. He said that his, his girlfriend was, was there before all this started. I'm like, you, you know, you're telling me a lot about what he said, but you're a detective and you're not telling me anything about any investigation that you're doing. And sadly, no. he said a lot of things, but my nephew can't say anything because my nephew's dead. Right, and he did this face like, "Yo, I mean, by the grace of God, I didn't get into right. a fight with this guy." Because it was like, "Yeah, whatever." I right? and then the other detective was like, "Yo, we gotta go." Like he jumped in the car, I was like, "Yo, we gotta go. Hurry up, we got somewhere else that we need to be." Right, so that like it set me off. There you go. The, that's 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 our word. We don't use trigger, right? It set me off, and I just you use it now. Right, I just I I got in dude's face. Like right. like old Jay got it, got in his face and I was I was cursing him out I was yelling and and he was <laughs> and I was like by the grace of God he didn't lock me up yeah at least at least that night because all he needed was a a brush to be like all right you just attacked a police officer yeah you yeah know. and I did and I did bump him I think you need to cool down throw I did your, throw your butt jet to cool you a, down there was a whole lot of saliva. <laughs> Attack <laughs> you! Keeps, he got attacked by a whole keeps, lot of saliva. He keeps spitting on me, right? But um, right. but right. So, so with all that, so it, you know, and it was. I mean, as you can tell, like a lot of emotions. Right. My family, um, his mother's family, right, and at the same time, I'm trying to be an anchor for my brother, right? Because I mean. As emotional as I was, imagine imagine Anar who's his dad. And this was Anar's mini me. But I thought this would be easier right now. But um just a few weeks ago I invited him to to Atlanta to come live with me. Or to come stay with me for a while. Right, the nephew. Not Anar. Yeah, not Anar, my nephew. Right? And um because he, he called mom and he was like, you know, I want to visit Georgia. Right, and mom told me, I was like, "Yeah, tell him. Right, you come, he can stay with me. If he needs me to buy his ticket, I'll buy his ticket. Right, Frontier babies, <laughs> <laughs> Mega Bus baby, <laughs> right, Mega Bus, whatever. <laughs> right, just to get him down here. Right, and you come and hang. Um, because he was a, I mean, you've met Jeremy. He was a good kid. He um, and that's why, like, all the news reports and all the police reports are trying to make him be the aggressor. Right, that he went, like the the thing is that he that he supposedly followed this kid and he was taunting him and attacking him and he was forcing his way into the kid's apartment and it was like right like who, <clears throat> like who is that because I like, saw so, uh, so so right that's not the kid we know so he had he had a drug problem right so the police the hospital performed a toxicology report because they tried to say that he was that he was high and that's why he did all that no drugs or alcohol of any kind in his system. Right. Right? Because he, he he was he was he got himself cleaned up. Right. So had had it been that he relapsed, then you know, okay, maybe because of the drugs, or whatever, that could right. happen. But fully clean toxicology right. report. Right. And this is the kid who is always looking down, real soft spoken, who even there, like just talking and memories and stuff. Like we mentioned how <laughs> down here, when he was down here the last time, he saw a dead deer on the side of the road and like he was bawling. Like he started bawling because he can't believe that somebody killed a deer and they just left it there. Right? I know. I get <laughs> home. I make right? some mistakes. <laughs> right? This is the kid that supposedly out of nowhere just snapped and was trying to be aggressive. Like, nah, like Jer- right. Jeremy, <laughs> love him. But Jeremy's such a punk. Like, there's no right. way. There's no <laughs> way. <laughs> right? There's no, there's no way. Like, there's no way at all. No matter how pissed off he gets. Right. Like, right. I'm so angry right now. I'm going to take a walk. Like, right. Okay. Bye. Later. Right. Gator. Right. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, so a lot of things don't add up and a lot of things sound made up. <sighs> And it was tough. It was tough leaving. It was tough leaving Pennsylvania with all of these unfinished and unanswered question questions. But something happened. Something happened when I was up there that um 
that I want to talk about because, like I said, I I lost it. Right. Right. I was out of character. Right. I was <laughs> out of character. I was old character. Right, the old. No, that's that's the, out of character because because right, that's, right, oh, that's that's the that's, old you. That's not where I live anymore. That's that's <laughs> uh, that's the the what is it the the old you? Right, that's the old me. So it was out of character. Right, you I, are I a character. I don't. But you were I don't even remember the last time you were that angry that I was that angry, and that I and that I acted that way. Right, right. Um, because yeah, out of character. That's not that's not who I am anymore. I haven't been or seen that guy. In years, right, um, and so with with that, I um, I so mom mom called and hung up. I um, I was pissed. I was pissed at everybody. I was pissed at everything. Pissed at the cops. Pissed at the people. I was like, I hate this town. I was like, why am I here? <laughs> I, was like, I, I hate this town. I hate everybody in it. I, you know, it was like bad. It was, it was bad. It was bad. Um, it was bad to the point that <clears throat> I got up to take my walk. Right, we were at the hotel, and I got up to take my walk, and I walked around, and I sat somewhere outside, and I was praying, and then the praying became out loud prayer, and then that out loud prayer became. Um, angry shouts, and then next thing you know, like if you were walking by, you would right. thought I was crazy like homeless some guy. crazy homeless guy <laughs> arguing with himself. But, Great, another one. Let me call nine one one. But um, in actuality, I was like having an argument with God. Right. right? Very was, reminiscent of the scene uh, in The Apostle with Robert Duvall. Very reminiscent. Remember when of, he's in the, when he's yeah. in the room yelling. Except he was in the of, room. He had the decency to be in the room. <laughs> I didn't have a room. I was in Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, you, you said you just left the hotel. <laughs> I know, but we were all in the hotel room. You should have just done it in the corner, <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> I, <did> just, <laughs> I can't open this thing. Uh, here, I'll open that for you while you continue your story. So, um, <coughs> so I'm having this argument with God, and I'm right because, and I was telling Joaquin earlier. That's that's the thing with someone. And people like us and like I say, like within our circle, you, Juice, Angel, and myself, that we're um we're learned people when it comes to the Bible. Right? Um you know, there are things that the enemy uses or reminds us of that that are scriptures in the word that can easily be used that can easily be used to um to be angry with God, right? And like those things are like when scripture says that that nothing happens on this earth that God doesn't allow, right? Things like that. So, you know, all of a sudden, thanks. I stand on that. Well, you know, you let this happen because you could have stopped it. And and <laughs> thank God. Thank God for being so merciful, for being such a merciful God that he didn't like he didn't do a job on me, like, where were you when I hung, when hung, the, I, hung when the stars? I, when I hung the stars and, and I hung the globe in, in, over nothing. And I'm like, I, I didn't get one of those, right? No, no, it's because I guess I did enough yelling. So he used the 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 small <clears throat> whisper of my wife, but we, we'll, we'll get we'll get to that later. <laughs> so so I was then I was arguing, I was fighting with God, and and it's it's funny because. I'm the guy that tells you, that tells you, you know, you prayer doesn't have to be like an event, right? right? Prayer doesn't have to be you being studious and using superfluous words to explain and describe, right? The right. Even scripture says, don't stand up and pray looking up with pride, puffed up with 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 beautiful words, right? That's not that's not what that's not what prayer is about. So correct. So I'm, I'm in the mindset that if if I don't pray that way, <laughs> if I don't pray that way, then I don't speak to God that way. So, like, I was, like, real, real arguing, right? Correct. God, but God, you say this, and God, you this, and God, and Holy Spirit, you were like, I was, right. like, going <clears throat> in curses and everything. I'm going to be completely transparent, right? <clears throat> and then I was exhausted. I was tired, right? Um, my mouth was dry, <laughs> 
And um and and my wife calls me. My wife calls me. <clears throat> um and she because like I we did the phone just like now. I FaceTime the kids to say goodnight and stuff. Right. Right. And um I was like, all right, well, you know, call me later where it's just us. So she calls me. And I pick up the phone and and we're talking and and I tell her about everything that happened, you know, the the dismissiveness of the police and how I came out of pocket and I got in the cop's face and I cursed him out and I and I told everything I said to him and she was like, you know, and she was quiet and all and then I'm telling her and she's like, you know, did you really speak to him that way? And I'm like, yeah, I spoke to him that way. Like, I don't give a bleep. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And she's right. like, you know, she's like, well, you know, there's everything that you had to say, even if it was right, it means nothing now because of how you spoke and how you acted. It's like, you know that, right? And that just made me snap now on her because that's not what I needed to hear. Right. Yeah, she was probably right. No, she was right. <laughs> she was no, prob- she no, and not probably. She, <laughs> she was probably right. She was right. No, nope. you know, but right because it's right. one of those things where, he, he, and here's the problem. Here's the problem, and we all have this problem, right? There's the truth, and then there's what we want people to tell us, and so we get mad. The reality is, you're mad. Part of the anger that you had for her when she said that to you wasn't about that she said it. But it's that there's that part of you, that new part of you that's in the background going, hey, man, I'm still here. <laughs> right. Like you're like, no, you know what? You know, what you know it was? you're like, crap. Like you a part of you knows that she's right. And that makes you angry. No, I knew that she was right. I knew 100 percent that she was right. Right. Yeah. That part it's, of you that knew just, that she was it's, right. It's just timing. Right? right. Like that's the thing. Like, like, you know how they how they tell you if somebody's wilding out and is all emotional and going like and is all like high, high anger. You don't. The worst thing for you to tell them is, "Hey, calm down," right? Because that just sets them off even more, right? Right. Hey, you, well, you need to calm down. The thing you do is, you, right, right. Down. What you do is, you slap them really hard, <laughs> and it shocks them into into right? calming so, down. So that that's so that slapped you. So that's all it was. Like she said that. No, she didn't slap me then. She slapped me later. She said that, and it it made me snap. It's like I don't need to hear that right now. Right. Right. I would rather. I don't. I, it's like I don't want you to. I, I, I was like, I don't want you to take my side and say, yeah, baby, you're right. You should have said even more, right? I don't need that because I know that's BS. But, you know, I would rather you stay quiet, stay quiet, than sound self-righteous in my ear. Right. Right? That's that's That was my right. thing. Right? I don't right. need... Your perception of what right? it, yeah, 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 exactly. She wasn't being self-righteous. No, she wasn't. But still, I, that's why I said, sound self-righteous yeah. in my ear. Yeah. Right? You know, you, you sound like You see that I'm angry. You see that I'm emotional. Right? First things first. Stop being a girl. Right. First things first. Stop. No, stop I together. need you. To, I need you to be serious right now. I'm gonna try for serious Joaquin. Right. right. First. First things first. <laughs> first things first. Right. You know, come alongside me. Understand why I'm that way, and then, then when things calm down, then you can say, "Baby, right? You got to do the chulo way, papito lindo. You know, right? Like things like that." Um, but. I was already, like, I was already, like, in a in an emotional state where, like, anything could have happened, right? Somebody could have walked by and said, yo, would you shut up? Right? And that's it. I would have been in, I would have been in jail because <laughs> it would have been done. Then the headline was, would be, Atlanta pastor <laughs> beats the crap out of somebody in Pennsylvania, right? But. And I'd be like, I don't know that dude. <laughs> it's like, I need, I need bail. But, um. <laughs> Who this? New phone. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. And I and I went off on her and 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 then things got quiet, you know. And I said, "Well, we'll hang up because you know we're just. I'm not gonna be out here just holding the phone in my head, right? But um, but yeah. And this is this is where, this is where she slapped me. This is where she punched me in my face, and where God got me. Um, she said something that was really interesting to me. She said, she said, well. You know, I I want I want I want to tell you something, but you don't want to hear it. And I'm like, ah, go ahead, just just say it. I mean, I can't be any more pissed than I am now, right? Right. And she said, and she said, she said, I know you want justice, right? I know you want justice, but you have to remember that justice isn't yours, and you might not see it now, and you have to be okay with that, right? But justice belongs to God. 
It's so funny. I thought I had all the tears before. It's like, you know, justice belongs to God. So you might not see justice for Jeremy right now in your life, and you have to be okay with that. But you also have to be the one to l- let your brothers know that and understand that so that they can be okay with that because you're the man of God there, right? And um, it shook me. It shook me to my core, right? Especially since she didn't yell at it. She, she didn't yell it at me. She like real soft spoken, real. She was like, all right, I love you. Good night. I'm like, no, go, go, go. Wait, 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 wait. Right, so... I had to swallow my pride and apologize to her for being such a jerk. But yeah, we hung up, and I didn't go back inside real quick. Like, hey, guys, I got a new word from God. <laughs> the brothers were like, what? <laughs> right? Um, I stayed outside, and um, and I repented. I repented. I, um, I asked God for forgiveness. And then, and then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the uh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit spoke some words in my heart and was like, and um, I said this, the understanding of that, right? Once you get that, then you know that I am justice, right? I am just. I'm a just God. And um, and then it went from an argument to a conversation with with Holy Spirit about, well, you know, Believers everywhere want justice, right? Social justice, social justice warriors, and how you can't distinguish between the social justice warrior who's a believer and the social justice warrior who's not. Right. Right? So, and right then, if you would have walked by and saw me arguing and cursing out loud, you wouldn't believe in any lifetime that, in Atlanta, I'm I'm Pastor Jay, right, right, because I didn't look any different. There was no distinction, there was no disting- distinguishable character that anyone who walked past or or saw me would have seen, right. There was no Jesus, right, and how I was re- and how I was acting. That cop, that detective, he, there was no Jesus in how I got in his face, like none at all. Right, and um, and so <laughs> Psalm eighty four nineteen fourteen says, "Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you." It's 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 it's. This isn't me saying or us saying that that we're supposed to do nothing. Right. We are, we are supposed to pursue justice. God says in Scripture, Scripture says that we are to pursue justice. But we, as believers, I believe that social justice or the pursuit of any justice on this earth should start with the church. Like it did back in the day with the whole civil rights movement. Right? It should start with the church. And the church needs to be a light in that darkness and not be a part of that darkness. Right? The church should be the ones to lead through prayer, through through radical acts of love and kindness, right? Which is which is which is God's way, right? Because that's who we are. We're children of God and we do things his way. Right? So that means we don't we don't get in people's faces. Right? We don't shove our emotions and our anger in people's faces. And we can be emotional and we can be angry. But above, above all that emotion and all that anger, right, we need to represent God and who God is. Right, right. And God's character in, in all things. Right, because Scripture talks about righteous anger, right? There's a difference between righteous anger and, you know, anger, plain old emotional anger or... <clears throat> You know, you can be righteously angry and not yell and not, right? Because it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an anger for, for what's, so like, so for Jay's example, right? A righteous anger could have been him talking to the cop and not being in his face, right? Jay's anger was an emotional anger, right? Right or wrong, that's what it was. 
right? Right. The example of the righteous anger would be Jay's angry because he wants justice for his nephew, but then he's talking to the cop and he's like, "Well, sir, you know, may I ask you why is it where it's like a uh, where you're at, at a at a at a you know instead of at a ten, you're you're like at a two, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. And, and that's hard. But and that's a hard thing to do, right? I'm not saying that. Oh, that's just so easy. All you got to do is blah 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 blah. But um, it's not it's not a diff it's not a I think I think it was one of those things where it's not a difficult thing to do when we're walking in when we're really you know trying to walk in in kind of those steps of of, of mercy and kindness and gentleness. Um, you know, when you think about. You know, Dr. King was was like was like you know, listen. If they spit at you, you take it. If they do, you know, you. But that doesn't mean that you're weak, right? That you know, you you're still there, there's still that anger there, but you don't retaliate, right? And I think that's the hard part. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's whole. It's like figuring out like you're emotionally angry because it's someone you love. So it's hard to to yeah. It's 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 knowing, right? It's not losing sight. Of who we are in him. Right. Right. And I lost sight of who I am, right. of who I am in right. him. Right. It's easy for us to right. do when it's someone else, but yeah. when it's us. And and that's the and that's the thing, and right? That's because, the lesson, right? That's dude, the- because before <laughs> before I finally fell asleep, I was I was sitting on the bed. Right. I was sitting on the bed and I'm and I'm again, this time in proper contemplative meditation with God, right? And I was thinking about all the the episodes that we've done. Right. Like about the reaction, the response, and it's always and it's always the same way, right? And well, you know, these are Christians; they should be Christians first. And um, do <laughs> and then I repented again, right? Because I'm like, you know, yeah, it's easy for it was easy for me to stand on the outside and point right. the finger, right. right? But now it's 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 my son in the, in the morgue, my son, my nephew in the morgue, right? Right? And now it's me, and I am not, right. and I am not. You know, Jesus first. That's a, that's a very, uh, that's a very, um, uh, oh, crap. What was the prophet's name that came to, came to see David? Nathan. Uh, Nathan. That's a very Nathan and David kind of conversation, right? right? Because, Word. right, because in the story, real quick, right, Nathan tells David the story, and David gets outraged. Yeah. And he's, how dare he? How dare he? And then Nathan's like, well, dude, you're the well, guy. That's and, you. That's right. you in the story. <laughs> and then David's like, screw I had a David and Nathan moment. Like, I was sitting yo, there. Yo. I was sitting in the hotel room. And yo, I'm like, you know, all that time, right? I puffed up. Like, oh, well, you've got to well, be Christian. I'm better. Christian, I'm better gotta, right. right. Now my nephew's in the morgue, and I'm in the, in the, in, in the detective's face. Right, cursing him out, yeah, right, and demanding justice for Jeremy, and you know, and and um, you know, few few, few scriptures, few scriptures, right, right, you know. So our our example of justice and the person who pursues justice is Jesus, right? Jesus pursued justice physically and spiritually. He rescued people who are in need. Where where from healing the leper in Matthew eight, right to to um. Protecting the the adulterous woman, right, right. So yeah, you know, without being angry, without like asking for eye for an eye, right. Um, so Old Testament and New Testament verses, right. Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. That's Psalm eighty two three. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless and please the widows and plead the widow's cause, right. Isaiah one seventeen, he has told you, man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and walk humbly with your God. Micah six eight. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe, you tithe the men and rule and every herb and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Right. So it's funny that well, it's not funny. It's 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 interesting that the verses that have to do with justice. Um, juxtapose justice with love and with kindness, right? Right, and with seeking God, right, and with service. Yes. So social justice, it's it's not it's not a bad thing because in the end, people just want answers. They want people to they want justice. They want justice. They want the people who committed the crime or who did the thing to right. pay for what they did, right. right? And I'm not gonna lie, I do see, uh, and we we've. We discussed this on the podcast too, where the kid that raped the girl when he was drunk, 
the judge said, oh, no, he's a good kid. He already right. spent some time in a holding cell. He paid for his crime. No, dude, this chick was raped. Right. Right? Three days in the holding in, 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 right. in, in the holding cell, that's not that's not equivalent. There's nothing that can equate it, but that's not enough because he's a good kid, right? Because apparently <laughs> even good kids do really messed up really things. Really messed up things, right? right? <clears throat> so instead of social justice warriors, right, we, we need to we need to own the title of being a social justice Christian. So you can still pursue and pursue justice and social justice, but you can never forget that you're doing it as a Christian. You can never forget that you're doing it as someone who serves and who sees themselves and calls themselves a child of God. Right. Right. The church has to lead the way and pursue justice on behalf of the orphaned and the widowed. Right. That's scripture. And that's also right. real religion. Right. But we can't do it unless we come in the name of the one only one who is truly and completely just, right? If we don't do it from that perspective, if we don't do it from that mindset, then we're just going by our emotions and allowing our emotions to dictate how we respond and how we react and what we do, right? right? Then we're, <clears throat> we're right along with the people that are riding and destroying property and doing all these right. things, and then you can't go from that and then go to lead worship on a Sunday morning, right. right? And without repenting, because you feel in your, again, here it comes again, but flipped in your self-righteousness that what you did was right. right. Because even if your intentions were in the right place, your actions did not reflect the just God that you serve. And they don't inflect, your, they, don't inflect they don't reflect your intentions. Right. Right? Um, <clears throat> You know, just to, to keep with your example of, of getting in the cop's face, your intention, right, was to maybe get some answers. Yeah, I wanted to be right? heard. Um, but that's not what anyone else, right? So that doesn't reflect. You're, you're inside, you were like, listen, man, I just want answers. I want to know why this. I want to know why that. You know, that was your intention, Right. But your actual action, anyone from the outside seeing it, they can't see your intention. So they all they see is, well, this dude just went out of his mind. So good. I mean, he's lucky. Yeah, he's lucky the cop didn't arrest. Cop should have arrested him for the way he was behaving. So you lose. So you lose out on what it is that you're trying to accomplish when when we when we allow our self righteousness and we allow our anger and we allow all these just you know emotions. To cloud our behavior. Correct. You know, and then you might, you know, now some, you know, and, and here's, and I'll say this, like you might not be one, you might not, like you said, with people rioting, you might not be rioting with them, but you being just as angry as they are and saying, well, you know, hey, if that's what needs to be done, well, you know what? You're you're a part, you're just, you're just as guilty as they are, right? Because because you're you're condoning, right, acts of violence. Violence, right? Um, what I find interesting in in all of it, in, in just this, in the scripture, and kind of in a larger thing is that, you know, it's okay, right, to ask for justice for X, Y, Z. But what I notice in the scripture is that, and I said earlier, I said there's a there's a there's a certain element of of, of service, right? So if you're telling me that you want justice for this group or this person, then my question, my question to push a little, push you a little more will be: Are you serving that community or that person? Do you see what I'm saying? Are you serving? Or are you just you know? Or are you just outraged? Are, are you just outraged? Or because are you just looking for something to pay? Are you outraged because you have to virtue signal? on what a good person you are. Because a lot of this outrage is just virtue signaling, right? It's just, I, uh, you, I'm doing this so you can see how good I am and how bad Jay is, right? <laughs> you know, but, but are you, are you start, because, you know, this idea of uh, the social of justice isn't just a, as, a, as an outcome to, some, to an injustice, but it needs to be a, an active participation in helping others, you know, uh, not 
not have to not have to reach not have to get to that injustice. Correct. You see what I'm saying? So you know, so if you're out here saying, "Oh, it's terrible that," uh, "Oh, it's terrible that," I don't know that the lunch that schools aren't going to serve these kids breakfast at lunch anymore or breakfast at lunch anymore. <laughs> they don't serve these kids breakfast at school anymore just because it's summer because summer's over. So what are you doing then to remedy that? Injustice. If you feel that's an injustice, are you gonna are you getting gr- together a group of people and finding out where those kids are so you, you can take and just getting so that you can take them so you can take them breakfast five minutes of fame right? That's so that's that's all I'm saying right, and that's what I'm saying right you know so so, so there's a dual there's so like, there's we, two we, things to it two so facets you know to 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 piggyback on what you just said right we have to engage in in what we find or to to be injustices right we have to right. engage in those things. But fueled by the compassion of Christ, right, right. And that's so we protect those that can't protect themselves, right. We fight for the oppressed, right. We walk with the hurt, but we do all this while pointing them to the God who heals, yep. right. The God who redeems, the God who restores, the God who renews, right. That's how we respond, yeah. Right, because if we believe that God is our source for everything then it's everything. It's everything. And it's not just, you know, the one thing that we need help with. Right. It's everything. And so we believe that, and we, based on that belief, right, we react and we respond. So, again, I want to reiterate, it's not that you can't get angry. Right. Right. It's not that you can't get angry when you see an injustice done. It's not that you can't get angry and want to do something. Right to correct it or to write it. Right, but the way we as believers, as believers respond yeah. to these things has to be different than how the non-believer or the unbeliever responds. Right, right. We can't have the same anger. Right, right? our anger has to be fueled by compassion. Right? right, it has to be fueled by love. Right, it has to be fueled by kindness. Right, so we see the injustice, and we don't want to. You know, make the person who who committed the injustice to pay for it in the same manner, eye right. for an eye. It's got you know. Oh, I'm gonna say this. It might be controversial. Yeah, this is our podcast. Or you might, or you might hate me for it. But you know what? It's also gotta be gotta be fueled by um, the forgiveness that's been afforded us. Oh wait, no, no, you got ahead of me. Oh, I got. Oh man, I'm so good. I'm so good. <laughs> so pursuing justice <laughs> starts with the foundation of I prayer. I didn't even read that. Right. <laughs> All right. Right? We, have, we have to realize that, that the battle is the Lord's and it's not ours, right? right? It involves sacrifice. It means stepping out of our comfort zone and, and, and persevering with patience, right? right? We, have to be, we, have to, we have to be wise and not just jump in because our emotions lead us, right? right? So we have to fight for justice, right? We have to pursue justice you know, from from the perspective of a just God, right? But the first step, <laughs> the first step in seeking that justice for, like, the first step, when I finally found peace and everything that happened with Jeremy and everything that's going on was before I went to sleep that night um, that I... You know, I, I, I repented and I asked God for forgiveness. And then I asked God to give me the strength to be able to forgive this kid that took his life. Right. Right. And it's still tough. Yeah. I, I still have to remind myself, right? I still have to remind myself that the same forgiveness that God has for me and right. that he has graced me with, he has for this kid. Right. Right. And as a Christian, as a man that loves and seeks God daily, right, I'm told that I need to love my neighbor. And this kid that killed my nephew. Pray pray for your enemies. Is my neighbor. Yeah. Right? I'm told that I need to love him the way I love myself. And it sucks. Because all I want to do is put my hands around his throat. Give him a hug. Right? <laughs> That's all I want to do. Right. That's all I want to do. The physical, the natural side of me wants to 
wants to do a Homer Simpson on him. Right. Right? But I know that the God that I serve tells me to love my enemies. Right. Tells me to love my neighbor. Yep. Right? And the first step as a social justice Christian is for me to know who this kid is and at night, I know his name. I'm not going to say his name on, this, on the show. I know his name and actually start praying for this kid. Right. That he can find a way to find the love of God. Right. Right. To s- find forgiveness, to repent of all his sins. Because even though he was the cause of what happened, of, of Jeremy's death, right? Right. God still doesn't want to see him in hell. God still, like, Jesus still came to earth. He still died on the cross and for he him. still died on the cross for yeah. him, just like he died on the cross for me. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a hard truth. It's it's a very hard truth. Yeah. And I'm still struggling with it. It yeah. gave me peace. Right. And I was able to, Friday and Saturday, where we had the funeral, right, I was completely different. Like, I was right. I was good. I was calm, right? I was, I was at peace. But um, it's still a hard truth for me to accept. Right. And, and every time I think about the situation, right. Right. I have to repent all over again. Right. And pray all over again. Even if it's real quick. Right. Right. But it's only a week old, right? So it's not like, you know, it happened thirty years ago. And and um <clears throat> so it's it's a little so it's still um still raw. Yeah. Right. But but yes, and and that's the and that's the thing is that, you know, it's it's not just forgiving, you know, because as you know, I have a family member bad crap happened to, and and you ask him, and you know, he's like, oh yeah, I, for, I forgave those dudes, I forgave those dudes, but he doesn't walk like he forgave those dudes, right? He still walks a little bit of that anger of what happened to him, and so, you know, when Jesus tells us, I mean, with with, and it's funny, right? Because God tells us, right? You know, when He tells us these things, part of it, I think, we 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 look at it as in, well, you know, that's the God we serve. He's a God that loves everyone. But you know what? It's also a way for us to move on. It's also a way for us to be able to handle. Um, and I don't mean move on in like a like you just forget, right? But move on so that you're not, con- you know, so you're not living in that state for the rest of your life, right? You know, um, yeah, forgiveness. You know, this has always been said, right? Forgiveness isn't isn't just about the other person. Forgiveness is about you being able to um, put it in a place so you can. You, right, so that you can walk your life um, and not let this one thing, because we all know people, we all know people, right? They can't forgive this one thing, and that's how they live their whole life. That bitterness. Is in that bitterness of that one thing, because that, that one thing didn't start off as bitter, but, that it, but it took root and it grew into bitterness. And that's the thing, that's a tough thing to tell people. It's a tough thing to, to model. Is like, yo, how can you not be angry at this dude? No, I'm angry, but I've forgiven him because that's what God asked me to do. I'm not saying it's easy. Some more, you know, it'll get to the point where like some mornings you have to get up and go, Lord, I really need a little bit extra, extra forgive this juice <laughs> to give this dude. <laughs> and some mornings you just wake up and it's not even right. It's not even a thing because you know it's there. You you've placed it in 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 the hands, you know. Of the one that gives that forgiveness, and of the one that, and then if you know, we go peace. back a few episodes. You have to remember that yeah. to forgive as to forgive others as God forgave us is to also forget. Yeah, right? not forget where you dismiss it and you don't right. want to think about it anymore, but you forgive so fully that when you do remember, you don't remember right and get. Angry, angry again, yeah, all if, over. If you're doing, if you're doing it right, every time you remember, a little less anger, right? Little, a little, little less, less hurt, little, little less, less hurt, hurt, little less anger, and that doesn't diminish the memory um, of the person or, or the impact or, of what or happened. The impact or whatever. But yeah. it's just you know that you have given yourself over to 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 living that life, to living that peace. Yep, living that peace, living that life, and then you can have a life, and then you can have a life that you know. Um, and it's a testimony. See, J, you know, it, it's a testimony now, right? It's a testimony that now Jay, when Jay speaks to someone and, and maybe and, and he can bring this to them right? and say, listen, I know I've been there. Right. I understand the anger. I understand 
But this is why this is a good thing. This is why God wants this. Um, you know, all of it, right? It's just, uh, it's just another, it's just another feather in the cap of yeah. how God has been good, even in the midst of, you know, tragedy. Yeah. So to close out, you know, to close out, I want to reiterate that um, it's okay to get angry whenever you see an injustice done whether on a grand scale or on a small scale, right? Because not all injustices sh show up on the news right. or show up in newspapers, right. right? Sometimes an injustice could be your neighbor not having enough food to give all her children, right? But we don't, we have to remember that, um, that we respond as children of a loving and just God. Yeah. And as my wife told me, we might not see justice now. Nope. We might not see justice in our lifetime, and that's only because that belongs to God. Right? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will repay. Right? And we have to be okay with that. We have to be at peace with knowing that justice is not up to us. Right. It's not in our hands. It's in God's hands. And as children of God... We have to be okay with that. You know, there is so much freedom in what she told me, right? It was so like yeah. <coughs> accepting that lifted such a burden off of me. Yeah. Like, there's so much freedom in, in, in knowing that and believing that our yeah. God is a just God. Yeah. And he'll ha and, and, and he'll handle it. Might not be now where we want it, because we want it right now. Right. It might not be in <coughs> the next few days, weeks, or years. Yeah. But we have to be good in knowing that justice is his because he's yeah. a just and loving God. And we have to do that hard thing and pray pray for our enemy. Right? Pray for that person. Um, Yo, that's it. Um, I got nothing to add. Thanks for joining us uh, on this uh, week's episode. A bit more of an emotional um, episode. Very, very raw. Um, so, um, <clears throat> listen, uh, we'll see y'all next week. Uh, glad that you joined us. Um, listen, if you, if you have anything you want to ask Jay, uh, as far as, you know, how, how, how to forgive, how to, how to do this, the steps, right? Cause it's a hard thing. You know, you can hit him up, uh, on Insta, which is the overflow podcast. You can hit him up at, uh, Twitter, which is overflow podcast, Facebook, um, don't be afraid to reach out if you're, you're you're dealing with, you know, this issue of being able to forgive someone. Jay will walk it with you because he just walked it. And he'll be more than glad to share that with you. Uh, hey, guys, till next week, we love you, and we'll see you. Peace. Thanks for listening. Remember to go to theoverflowpodcast.com to subscribe to the podcast on all streaming platforms and catch up on all the links of the week. And don't forget to follow our playlist on Spotify.